So the StarCraft 2 10 year anniversary is quickly approaching. I still remember picking up the game nearly a decade ago at this point, not quite realizing where it was going to take things. But regardless, today we're going to have a look at this blog post that Blizzard published just a couple of hours ago, titled StarCraft 2 5.0 PTR Patch Notes. Now, I don't remember exactly when they introduced 4.0, but if I'm not mistaken, Heart of the Swarm, the very first expansion, introduced the 2.0 patch, then Legacy of the Void, the 3.0 patch, and I guess maybe like a multiplayer update or something like that introduced 4.0. Regardless, this is going to be the 5.0 patch, which is actually quite exciting. I mean, I had no idea that they were working on this, but it's good to see that the development of this game continues. Now... I want to go through this blog post today. I also quickly want to show you another blog post that they published, I think about a week or two ago at this point, um, where they basically went over upcoming changes and additions that they are making to the editor. So I will include links um, to both of these blog posts down below in the description of this video so you can read it if you want to. The thing is, <laughs> I checked out most of this very, very long blog post that Blizzard published, well, apparently July 14th. Um, it's a significant improvement to the StarCraft 2 editor. Now, I have never made maps in StarCraft 2 before. I have never, you know, made a custom map or, or like a, an arcade game or a custom campaign or anything along those lines. But let me just show you how long this, this actual post is. I am no expert on this, so I'm sure you can find more information on this sort of thing if you want to. One really cool change, though, that I do want to highlight is this one right over here called Multiple Cliff Layers. So as it is right now in StarCraft 2, when you make a map, it's limited to three layers only, which is the reason why oftentimes there's like no, um, for example, high ground in the natural leading down towards the low ground towards the third base. Like basically when you're making a map, you're limited to three layers. And one of the cool changes that I think a lot of people are going to easily be able to understand you know, basically people that aren't map makers like myself. Um, this is going to be up from 3 to 15, meaning that you can go ahead and make a lot of really cool maps. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to if this is going to be very, very significant when it comes to map design as well. But there's a lot of stuff, man. There's a lot of stuff. Now, like I said, I'm no expert. I'm just quickly show or I'm just quickly scrolling through it to show you how much there actually is. If you want to read it, once again, link is down below. Um, but long story short, the editor, the StarCraft 2 editor, to make maps, but also to make custom campaigns and arcade games and all that, um, is going to be improved significantly. Now, this is the 4.13, so the 4.13 PTR patch. This right here, the blog post that has been published today, is the 5.0 PTR patch. So, a couple of things. First off, general. A new genre has been added for arcade maps called Campaign. StarCraft 2 now supports transitioning a multiplayer lobby between two maps for more information and blah, blah, blah. Uh, a new subsection under custom has been added as well called campaigns and uh, displays maps published under the campaign genre. This right here is awesome. Some of you might recall some of the custom campaigns that were available for other Blizzard games back in the day. This is going to make publishing those campaigns significantly easier. Now, I know that there are some arcade campaigns already in SC2 right now, but they can be a little bit finicky. Um, I remember, uh, I don't know if this is still a problem, but I remember there were some problems back in the day with like saving your progress and all of that. And I'm pretty sure this is going to make things significantly easier. With the improvements to the editor, I'm really excited to see what kind of arcades, or sorry, what kind of campaigns... Um, you know, players actually come up with. And I'm certainly looking forward to covering some of those custom campaigns on the channel in the future. So if you're interested in that, let me know down below in the description of, uh, or rather the, uh, the comment section of this video, because I would love to go ahead and cover some of those. I know there's some excellent ones out there, like for example, Mass Recall, and recently someone made like the Kerrigan uh, Covert Ops as well. And I've never really played those. Um, maybe I should, but I guess we will we'll go ahead and, uh, and at the very least check out a couple of them as the 5.0 patch releases. Now, just to clarify, by the way, um, I saw at least a lot of confusion about the words PTR, or I guess the letters PTR in this instance. Um, it stands for Public Test Realm. So it's, it's basically like a separate server that is currently live for SC2. You can download this patch if you want to. You can check out the changes if you want to over there. Um, but long story short, it's not quite a published and, and finished version yet you can kind of you can kind of view i guess a ptr patch is like a, a a beta patch for now and then at some point in the future they're going to be releasing uh the full version of this patch to the live version of the game so first off custom campaigns secondly the editor improvements so that's that other blog post that i talked about uh, once again link is down below new campaign achievements now i'm excited for this one myself 
Um, I did a campaign achievement hunt, I think about a year or two ago at this point on the live stream, where I basically completed all of the achievements for the StarCraft 2 campaign. So I've got 100% of the achievements done. Now, a new campaign achievement has been added for every mission in Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm, Legacy of the Void, and Nova Covert Ops. Upon completion of all 10th anniversary campaign achievements, player will re or players will receive the new Stone Announcer. So Stone obviously is one of the guys um, that was with Nova in the Nova Covert Ops. But I'm excited to once again have a reason to go through the campaign, because I always really enjoy uh, playing through those missions. But I mean, like I said, I've completed all of them on Brutal, I've done all of the achievements, there's really no particular reason for me to go back other than just have fun. And I mean, having fun in 2020 in video games? Ridiculous. No, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to once again going through these achievements and then eventually getting the stone announcer as well. Now it says, note, these achievements can be earned on any difficulty of both normal. However, they are designed to be scalable and are possible, though extremely challenging on even brutal. All right, so yeah, I will definitely be playing on them. I, I will definitely be playing them on brutal myself. Um, it's gonna be a fun challenge. I'm looking forward to that. All right, now here's another thing that has been promised for like, I don't know, like three years at this point, and it's finally gonna come into the multiplayer version of the game. Countdown to start timer. So in versus games, a short countdown timer will now count down to the beginning of the game after all players have loaded in. So long story short, essentially how this works is once the, the progress bar of the players loading in finishes, there's a three second timeout. So right now as it is, when you click the find match button and a match is found, you stare at the middle of your monitor until the game begins. And right now you can just chill a little bit, knowing that you're gonna get like an audible cue and then also a visual cue that the game is just about to start, which is a nice, nice addition. Um, I like this a lot actually. This doesn't seem very significant, but I really think that this is a, uh, a substantial improvement. It's also gonna make, um, I guess early game worker splits a little bit easier, right? Because you can, you know, center your mouse at the correct position and all that. It's gonna make things a little bit smoother. And uh, yeah, it's a nice change that I wish we have had for many years. Um, apparently it took a while to implement, but it's finally coming. This right here is actually also a very significant one. And while I can imagine this isn't particularly relevant for the majority of the player base, I love this change. So game server choice on lobby creation. Lobby hosts may now select their game server when creating a custom lobby. Requires enabling an option in your language and region options. This one right here is important, especially for the esports parts uh, of, of SC2. So, say for example, you're doing a tournament, right? And you have players from Korea participating against players in Europe. The majority of the time, the way that this works right now at that professional level is that they switch on over to the North American server and they basically host a game on the NA West server, which is essentially like, you know, where the where the two places meet in the middle, you know what I mean? Because um, obviously if you were, you know, say you're playing in Korea and you're forced to play on the European server or you're in Europe and you're forced to play on the Asian server, um, you're in a lot of trouble because the ping is absolutely unfair. So they try and meet in the middle. This is going to make setting all of that up substantially easier. And um, while, yeah, once again, I don't think this is particularly relevant for a lot of players out there, it certainly is going to make hosting and creating tournaments at the pro level quite a bit easier. So I really, really like this change. Uh, next up, there is a new announcer called Whitera. For those of you that have been around for a decade, you may remember Whitera. Um, he actually works at Twitch these days. He's a super nice guy. I met him a couple of years ago. Um, easily one of the nicest people I ever met in esports. But he had a lot of very uh, memorable quotes like, First we expand and then we defense it. Um, more GG, more skill. Like he had a lot of great quotes uh, that really uh, set him apart. And yeah, I, I think a lot of people probably will remember him if you at the very least were around back in the day. These days he doesn't play professionally anymore, um, but a new wide draw announcer uh, is gonna be added to the game as well. But obviously you guys don't need that, right? You guys are already running the loco announcer, which by the way, if you decide to pick up the loco announcer in game, I get a percentage from the seal. So I mean, you know, you should, Probably go get it if you want to. Anyways, long story short, long story short, don't worry about it. Uh, new stone announcer here as well. So like we said, uh, or like I talked about already earlier, if you get all of the achievements from the new um, campaign achievements, then uh, apparently you get the announcer right over here. So a dominion goes with a mysterious past. He is simply known as stone. Unlocking the stone announcer on the PTR will not carry over to the other regions. Right, fair enough. All right, so pretty good, right? So this, this is just a, a couple of small things that they're adding to the game. Next up, there is a co-op update. And this one is huge as well. I'm a big fan of this. So for players that play this game quite a bit, and that includes myself, 
if you get all of the co-op commanders to the maximum level, and you then go ahead and just simply get your, uh, what's it called, like the ascension level or whatever to the maximum level as well, so you unlock all of the mastery points and all that, um, there really isn't much for you to go ahead and do anymore in, in co-op, other than the weekly mutation missions, but after you've played a couple dozen of those as well, it kind of just blurs it together, and uh, it becomes very much so the same, right? So, here's a cool thing. They're introducing Commander Prestige. A new Prestige system has been added to allow players to play through the level 1 to 15 progression up to three additional times per Commander. Each time a player activates Prestige with a given Commander, they will unlock a unique Prestige talent, which can be used to change the core gameplay of the Commander. This is pretty cool. I remember our Prestige system being a part of, I believe, Call of Duty 4? Way back in the day, you could basically unlock, like, golden weapons. Some of the boomers here watching this may remember that. I mean, I'm 27, I'm not really a boomer, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, this is cool. I really, really look forward to leveling this up, especially because some of the things that they're introducing are really, really cool. So, only one prestige talent may be equipped at a time for each commander, and it is possible that a player equips none of these talents, in which case the commander will receive their standard loadout. Example of the prestige talent include Avatar, the Limitless. Ultimate evolutions are uncapped in number. So right now you can have three of the Brutalisks and three of like the big boys that fly. Uh, however, ultimate evolutions require 200 biomass to morph and biomass gives half the normal benefits. This is cool, man. You might be able to just get a massive, massive army roaming the map as Avatar, which I really, really like. Secondly, there's Alarak. Uh, Artificer of Souls, when a supplicant dies, it will permanently increase the damage and attack speed of one of Alarak's nearby non-heroic mechanical units. However, Alarak's active abilities deal 50% less damage. Okay, now this one is my personal favorite from the ones that I've read so far. The Haka Brute Brother. The Haka gets a brother, however, they both have less life. So, pretty sure what this means is that you get a second the Haka. That will also start leveling up, which sounds absolutely broken, and, uh, well, I mean, it's co-op, it doesn't really matter too much, but it sounds like a lot of fun to mess around with, so I'm looking forward to giving that a try as well. So, with 18 commanders and 3 prestige talents per, uh, talents rather, per commander, this means there are now 54 new prestige talents to try out. Note that the co-op experience gain rate has been greatly increased on the PTR, so on the public test realm, uh, to facilitate the testing of this prestige feature. Really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. I'm looking forward to giving this kind of stuff a try, and I know a lot of you are huge fans of, uh, of co-op as well. Now, there's also a bunch of other stuff for the commanders. I don't know if I'm going to read through all of this. Uh, we can quickly have a look. I haven't actually read this yet, but Abathur, um, the double biomass chance mastery increase. Yeah, okay, so there's some changes right here. Tempest anti-air range for Artanis increased from 6 to 10. The Haka, the Greater Primal War cooldown. Yeah, there's a bunch of changes, basically, like... You can pause the video if you want to and just read those yourself if you're interested. Or, once again, check out the blog post down below. Um, I really like the changes that they've actually made to co-op over the last couple of years. Monk has done an amazing job at just simply, you know, uh, making uh, the co-op co game mode more fun. Right? For a long time, it kind of felt like they were trying to strike a balance between the different co-op commanders. And I guess they're still, you know, at least somewhat evenly spaced when it comes to, like, power levels and stuff. But, yeah, I'm glad that... Uh, the main goal in co-op is to have fun. <laughs> you know, like, it's not a competitive uh, thing, really. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, I remember once upon a time, they were planning on adding, like, co-op leaderboards. I would still love to see that, but maybe that would take away a little bit from the fun. So, I don't know. Anyways, a couple of bug fixes as well. Fix an issue where adding and taking away units from a control group with a large number of units would cause performance hiccups. This actually uh, was noticeable as a Zerg player on the ladder every once in a while uh, when maxed out, so this is cool. Uh, Carrick's newly built Nexi or Nexusus, I never know the plural, will now properly cr cast Chrono Boost on themselves when there is a Carrick's in the game. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things as well. Apparently, there's also a small bug fix right here uh, for Versus. Shield batteries will now correctly obey stop commands on non-defensive structures while autocast is enabled. Didn't know that that was a thing. And the same right here for this. Shield batteries with the battery overcharge buff may no longer restore the units of shield or the shields of units inside of transports. I don't think that this has really come into uh, a professional game yet, but I can imagine, yeah, there there might be some use for uh, for abuse over there uh, once people got the hang of that at some point. So good to see that uh, at the very least, this is no longer be a thing right now. Not that really anyone was using it, but it's good to see. And then a couple of other changes as well that are relevant for that other blog post that I've referenced earlier. 
Okay, now here's the big question. Why did they decide to call this the 5.0 patch? I'll let you think about it for a little bit. I don't know if this is the case. I have no insider information whatsoever. Um, if I did, I couldn't talk about this. <laughs> so, you know, it's fair enough. Um, here's the thing. I've got a feeling that they may very well have something special still to come. I know that the Pylon Show, which is a big podcast for StarCraft 2, has rescheduled a bunch of stuff. And the rumor has it that apparently some of the StarCraft developers are going to be going on as well. I wonder if they have more things planned um, for, you know, the, the 5.0 patch. Because this could have been, it kind of feels to me at the very least, that this could have been like the 4.14 patch or something along those lines. I wonder if maybe they're planning on, on adding something new to this as well. Now... I don't know, maybe maybe it's gonna not, you know, be anything more. Maybe this is gonna be it, and that would be cool, I guess, as well. Um, don't wanna, you know, get your hopes up too much. I don't think there's gonna be, like, a, a new campaign or anything like that. I mean, it is pretty obvious, obviously, that StarCraft 2 at this point is a 10-year-old game. I don't think we can really expect a whole lot of new content added to this game as well. Just, but, you know, the amount of people still working on StarCraft, the team obviously has been reduced a lot over the years. So I don't really know exactly if they have the manpower to, like make an entire custom campaign and all that, or, or not a custom campaign, like a uh, a fully fleshed new campaign, like the Nova Covert Ops. I know a lot of you would love to see a Dahaka custom, or, or like a Dahaka Covert Ops, or whatever you would call it, or like a, say like a, I don't know, like a, an Alarak uh, mission pack as well. I would love to see that, but I highly doubt that that is going to be happening at this point. Maybe we're in for a surprise. If there is going to be a significant update, I will obviously let you know next week as well. If it's not worthy of a video, though, I will probably just post about it on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, so you can stay up to date over there as well. It's at LocoTV on both of these places. For now, though, I would really like to know what your favorite feature of this patch is. I really like the fact that the editor is being updated and that there is an option for custom campaigns to be like a separate game mode uh, in StarCraft 2, which I really think could add to the longevity of the game. There's a lot of very talented people in the StarCraft 2 community that make amazing stuff. I'm also excited for like the additional layers that you can make on multiplayer maps, which I think is going to be pretty significant as well. And I'm excited to like try out the campaign once again and go through all of the new achievements and then also, you know, level up the co-op commanders. There's a bunch of new stuff coming. I'm excited for all of it. But let me know down below in the comment section what your favorite change is. For now, though, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in that next one.